Welcome to LifeSpring Church. We hope you enjoy this message. To find out more about LifeSpring Church, head to linktr.ee forward slash LifeSpring UK. So we're going to continue. Steve, can you just stick one of my two slides up, please, which is a title, because I can't remember quite what I called it. Yep. Encounters with God, Heaven Touching Earth. So we're continuing um, this series of God Encounters today, and um, in fitting with the season, I wanted to look at a series of Christmas encounters which took place on that first Christmas over 2,000 years ago. Um, you see, when we're talking about encounter, we're not just thinking of everyday experiences with God, as wonderful as that is, but we're looking at specific, generally powerful, supernatural, life-changing encounters with God that make a marked difference in our lives. So a couple of weeks ago, James looked at Zacchaeus, and uh, we saw there this was uh, such a memorable day for him when Jesus stopped by and invited himself for tea. Zacchaeus would be able to tell you the time and date because it ended up in so much more. That invitation became an encounter which led to his salvation. And his life was completely changed. Or the week before, we looked at the woman who was so ill, she spent all her money on medical care, but only got worse until she just touched the robe of Jesus. And as she touched him, power touched her life. And she was totally healed. For 12 years, she'd been sick. But one touch from Jesus, one encounter, and she was totally well. She too would be able to give you the time and date because that encounter changed her life. As with Debs' leper last week, just hoping that Jesus would be willing to heal him. And he was. A life of misery and isolation was stopped in an instant as the power of God was released and healing came. So encounters, encounters with God don't happen every day, but when they do, they leave a mark on our lives. And to be honest, many seem to be unplanned. I, um, I know there's a story, Pastor Caesar tells a story of when he wondered whether God even existed. And he said, well, if you are God, I'm going to be in my living room at 10 o'clock at night and I'd like you to come. And Pastor Caesar has these amazing experiences all the time, it seems. And, uh, and God came and light filled that room and touched him. And, and Pastor Caesar knew that God was real. That was an encounter. But those sort of things actually don't happen every day. And usually, it seems, they're unplanned. We can't... I, I mean, I think the stuff we can do to create an environment, that would be one of the questions we're looking at at the end. But God so often just seems to take the initiative and break in at certain times, as we shall see in a moment or two. So today we're going to look at three angelic encounters, God breaking in heaven, touching earth. So first, an old priest. He and his wife were childless, but they loved the Lord and they served him faithfully. And then one day, as he was going about his priestly duties, as normal, Zechariah went into the temple to offer incense to the Lord. And we read from Luke, the, Luke 1 verse 11, tells us that an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right hand of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Verse 17, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, well, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel says, I'm Gabriel. 
I stand in the presence of God and I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you'll be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. Wow. An encounter with an angel and everything changed. Heaven touched earth. And as I said, everything seemed quite normal for Zechariah up until then. Sure, they had longed for children, even prayed to God for them, but they never came. And now he and his wife were well past childbearing years. They were continuing to live their lives, a godly, faithful couple in their little community. Spiritually, it was a dark season. The prophetic voice was last heard over 400 years earlier. Rome ruled over Judea. And although it allowed Jewish worship to continue as an exception, hope and expectation of God moving again, as he'd done before, was very low. It had been a long time with no heavenly activity. And suddenly, an angel. God hadn't forgotten his promises. And he was breaking in to fulfill them. And it doesn't appear Gabriel was like our sweet little nativity angels with wings and tinsel. Rather, Zechariah was gripped with fear when he saw him. Gabriel would have been awesome. It would have been awesome, James. <laughs> Being one of only two archangels the Bible mentions. He'd been sent from the presence of God to speak to Zechariah. The people outside thought Zechariah must have had a vision. I don't know. Either way, God broke in through Gabriel and announced what in the natural was impossible. He was going to be a father in his old age. But just coming back to Gabriel, you know angels are real. They're spirits. And it seems there are millions of them. Heaven is full of angels, too many to count. Sometimes they take on human form, as with Gabriel. But other times, they're invisible spirits. There may well be some here in the building today, I don't know. I can't see them because they're invisible. But they come. And they inhabit places on earth from time to time. They're sent by God to work out his purposes on earth. Announcing his plans, sometimes to bring judgment, or involved in spiritual warfare in the heavenly realms with fallen angels, which are demons. So angels are real, and they exist. I was telling Phoebe and Bethany the Christmas story the other day, and I mentioned an angel came and appeared to Mary. And I just innocently said to them, I said, you know, angels are real, not like fairies. And Bethany stopped me. She said, Pops, but... I've had a tooth fairy come into my bedroom. And I thought, uh-oh, um, not sure how I get round this one. Uh, I'll leave that for James and Lisa to sort out. Um, but it does illustrate, actually, a challenge we have with our children, doesn't it? I mean, Father Christmas, elves and fairies will obviously make believe. And for many, part of the fun of Christmas. But then angels and demons and other supernatural beings are real. Not make believe. And we don't want our children to get confused about what's real and what's not. But coming back to the story, Zechariah encountered Gabriel and he was struck dumb that very soon his wife was pregnant with a little boy, just as Gabriel had declared. Meanwhile, in a nearby village a few months later, Gabriel dropped by again. And we'll read from verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, so she was now obviously six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words. And wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. 
Just moving on for sake of time, verse 34. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Well, another angelic encounter. Previously to an old man, this time to a young girl. And again, Mary's reaction was exactly the same as Zacharias. Greatly troubled and frightened with this angelic visitation. So often the case, isn't it, with supernatural encounters. I guess if Gabriel appeared here, we'd be terrified too. But for us Western-minded people, sometimes anything supernatural or out of the ordinary causes us to fear. I remember, for example, we were in a meeting quite a number of years ago now, and um, a friend of mine just heard singing in tongues for the first time, and, and she ran out of the building, confused and afraid. What was going on? It all sounded so strange, and people she knew were speaking in tongues and strange languages she'd never heard before. It was supernatural. It was the Holy Spirit was evident. I remember another occasion when God was moving powerfully at the school we used to meet in and many manifestations were taking place and, and a mum came in wondering where her son was and I said, oh, um, somewhat casually, he, he's over there on the floor, but he's all right. But to this non-Christian mum, it didn't look like he was all right. And she was understandably worried. Not the sort of thing you expect to see in church. Bodies on the floor, unfortunately. Um, but it was out of the ordinary. But so is God. And I think we all, I want us to get more used to him coming and doing what he wants to do. Of course, we need discernment. Not everything supernatural is from God. But let's be open to him coming. Any way he likes, accepting that he's supernatural and we're not. We may not always be comfortable. But if it's him, he's welcome. And if he sends his angels, they're welcome too. Anyway, the angel made this announcement to Mary. You're going to have a baby boy. He's going to be great and called the son of the most high. And Mary quite innocently asks, well, how can this be possible? I've never even slept with a man. She's then told it will be by the Holy Spirit. And listen to her reply. I'm the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Or as the Living Bible puts it, I'm the Lord's servant. I am willing to do whatever he wants. May everything you said come true. This is a heart response God's looking for from all of us. It's not always about understanding. Sometimes it's just about trusting and surrendering to God. Your will be done, not mine. And when we have that soft, humble, open heart, like Mary's, God can do anything and use us powerfully because nothing is impossible with God. I was sent a question from a life group leader the other day um, from a person interested in Christianity. Not the life group leader, a friend of his. <laughs> just to clarify. Um, and, and, and the question was, if I become a Christian, do I need to change? Well, what an interesting question. Um, and the answer, of course, I mean, I don't know whether he lived a good life or, or a bad life, but the answer either way is, well, yes. We're all called to change. It's called repentance. Change of heart, change of mind. And that leads to a change of action and a change of priorities in our lives. We can't be a Christian if we're not changing. Or well, we can't be a disciple anyhow if we're not changing. And when we come to God, everything changes. He's not just Savior, but he's Lord. And Mary was used powerfully because although she didn't understand it all, she saw herself as a servant of the Lord and was just willing to do whatever he asked. Now, we only have script, which I've read to you today. 
And I find it hard to understand why Zachariah's question was met with a different response, and he was struck dumb. But Gabriel, I presume, would have discerned his unbelieving heart, whereas with Mary, it was full of faith and a willingness to obey. And just think of it for Mary, the cost that was going to, she was going to have to pay. What would her family say? As her belly began to get bigger. What about Joseph? How can she expect him to believe another man wasn't involved? And it was God. Why should anybody at all believe her? She would have been an outcast in her community. She would have lost those years. She's probably just a teenager, and she would have lost those years of youthful fun and enjoyment. But she chose to say yes to God. I'm willing. Let your will be done. And God used her powerfully. Of course, in some ways, this angelic encounter was minor compared to the Holy Spirit encounter she experienced as she was impregnated with divine seed, the miracle of virgin birth. And of course, it was a miracle. Totally supernatural. It was God, prophesied hundreds of years earlier by Isaiah, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. You see, the whole of this Christmas story, everything about God, it's supernatural, it's miraculous. It's, I'm just reminding you today, you know, this is what we're believing. There's a church down the road, that way, yes, just trying to work out where we were, who preached the resurrection of Jesus didn't really happen. I can't really believe it. Why would you want to be a church and not believe in the resurrection of Jesus? But there you go. But if the resurrection didn't happen, as Paul says, our preaching and our faith, it's useless. It's just a waste of time and energy. There's no good news, no gospel. Because as he tells us, if there's no resurrection, then we're still dead in our sins. And if we're still in our sins, we cannot be reconciled to Father God because he's holy and we're sinful. The three people today have broken that barrier down because they've recognized the need for a saviour. Hallelujah. And it's a saviour that rose again. And there are bishops and their priests who don't believe in the virgin birth. But for me, it's up there with the resurrection. Jesus wasn't simply a good human being. He wasn't simply a great teacher, as he might have been if Joseph actually was his father. No, he was God. Joseph obviously wasn't his literal father. Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and the Son of God was born. And here's the mystery. 100% God and 100% man. Hallelujah. Totally man totally divine. That's Jesus. God came as a little baby, born by Mary into a cold and hostile world. Next week we'll be singing, nearly sang it today with one of the songs, he was begotten, not created. What does that mean? We sing it every year. Well, Mary actually didn't bring Jesus into existence. He already existed with his father. And yet God came, leaving aside his glory and majesty to be born as a vulnerable, weak little baby through Mary, Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. God came in human form, and he's worthy of our worship and surrendered lives. So I just wanted to say, I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the resurrection. I believe it's all totally supernatural, and it's God. Just one last thing, really, before um, I close. Well, actually, a couple more things. Um, but um, we read about another supernatural event, and it could have been so easy to miss. But Dr. Luke tells us about it. You see, when Mary, who was now pregnant, heard her cousin Elizabeth was six months pregnant, she went to visit her. And as she entered their home and knocked on the door and greeted Elizabeth, Luke tells us the baby inside Elizabeth's womb leapt with joy, or well, leapt, and she was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit. 
That's encounter. A powerful encounter. The seed inside of Mary produced an encounter in Elizabeth's womb. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible tells us John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. I have a feeling that was the time. The Spirit touched that little baby in the womb. And something happened. He encountered God at birth. That powerful encounter, um, triggered by that divine seed in Mary, um, and Elizabeth begins to prophesy. She gets filled with the Holy Spirit and begins to prophesy. No words mentioned other than, hi, Elizabeth, it's me. And God comes into the place. As I say, sometimes we're not planning these events. God just moves powerfully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was tangible. And she was filled with the Spirit, began to prophesy over Mary. And then Mary responds and prophesies too. And then when John was born, Zachariah's tongue was opened, loosed. And the Bible tells us he too was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to prophesy. Just think he'd been a priest all his life, but no Holy Spirit. And now the Spirit had come, touched his life, given him a baby. He was a happy man. But one last thing I want to mention, more angels appeared one more time, of course, to the shepherds in the fields. We won't read it because of time, but they were out there in the fields. The angel says, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. A saviour has been born. And what was the shepherd's immediate response? You've guessed it, fear. I do want to see some angels, but I do wonder how I'll respond. Every time it happens here, they were terrified. But heaven had to spill over to earth with this amazing news. God had come, a saviour's been born for everyone. What an amazing story, so familiar. And yet if we're not careful, we can lose the wonder of what happened. Emmanuel, God came. I love the Christmas story. So supernatural and otherworldly. We sometimes try to make it sweet and cute, but it was the very opposite. Moments of sheer fear, of amazement, of wonder, of angelic visitations, of physical reactions to the divine, of people being powerfully filled with the Holy Spirit. Christmas came with powerful encounters as heaven touched earth. John, do you want to come forward? So today's message is, well, I'm not sure it's like, I like to have ones that you can apply and go away and really work out in your life, but it's more of us reminding of the greatness of God, the power of God, the love of God, and the desire of God to impact and touch human lives with his presence and his power. It's about God breaking into our human race. God among us. And let's not just see it as a fantastic, historic moment which... We rightly want to celebrate every year. But let's be reminded he still wants to come. And he still wants to break in to the mundane. And just as the Spirit came upon Mary, he wants to come upon you. And when he does, a supernatural dimension is released. Maybe it will be a prophetic utterance. Or speaking in tongues. Maybe it will be an impartation of faith conviction. It's a story of Smith Wigglesworth walking down the train and uh, as he's walking down the train, passengers began to say, sir you convict me of sin and they fell on their knees and began weeping. He hadn't uttered a word, but a bit like when Mary visited Elizabeth, something inside of him touched the hearts of those who were there. Who knows what God can do? He's powerful. And when he comes, his life overflows. It could be hands touching someone, releasing sickness, bringing health. Or as you're filled, it could simply be you going from this place, bringing goodness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit everywhere you go as his abundant life overflows. Let's stand together. Let's celebrate heaven touching earth at Christmas. Let's remember he also wants to touch you 
so that you can touch others too and his life can overflow. I think, Steve, we've got some questions just as I have a prayer. Questions for life group, discussion if you're meeting this week. But I want to encourage us to believe for God to believe that he wants to touch lives. I don't know if there's sick people here today. I don't know if there's anybody that feels I just need a touch. I just need him. Um, I don't know if the Lord's convicting anybody here particularly or maybe hard-heartedness or a, a passivity which, which which has taken over. It used to be passion and now it's passivity. But I want to give opportunity as we sing this last song for people to come forward and we'll have a team and we'll pray. Thanks for watching this message. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. To find out more about our church, head to linktr.ee forward slash LifespringUK.